Welcome to your first online tutorial for image critique. Today we're going to be looking at an AP thoracic projection as well as a lateral thoracic projection. We're going to jump right in and get started without any hesitation because I know you people are busy. So let's get started with some basic characteristics of vertebrae. As we all know that all vertebrae have a vertebral body. And we're going to use two different drawings today. We're going to use the schematic to the right of your screen, and we're going to actually look at the image, uh, x-ray image to the left of your screen. So first thing we're doing is looking at vertebral bodies. Let's take a look at those on the x-ray. I'm going to zoom in just a touch, erase that little mark there. All right, vertebral bodies are pretty easy to identify. There are these major squares running right along the middle of the body. Vertebral squares. Those are our vertebral bodies. Now how do you accurately count the vertebral bodies of the thoracic spine? The most accurate method is to identify the first rib and we do that by looking at this C-shaped structure up here. We find it up here near these clavicles. Here's our clavicles here. Here's clavicle here. And right around that area, we are going to find this C-shape and follow it around. Now, if you look at where this starts and stops, here's these wings here, which are transverse processes, and they follow along here. Now, note that T1, T11, and T12 have direct articulations with their respective thoracic vertebral bodies. So what I'm saying is T1 articulates, or I'm sorry, first rib articulates directly with T1, and T12 articulates directly with the 12th rib, and T11 articulates directly with the 11th rib. So this is T1. All the other ribs, T2 through T10, share articulations with their superior and inferior vertebral bodies. For instance, if we look here, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see, the head of this rib articulates with this vertebral body and this vertebral body. Zooming back out, this is our costo, meaning rib, vertebral, of course meaning vertebrae, vertebrae joint space where the head of the rib articulates with the vertebral bodies. We have another rib articulation or joint, and that is the costotransverse, and we'll discuss that in class. I'm going to erase all this so we can get a much cleaner drawing. Let's go back to our vertebral bodies. We said that this was T1. Let's count to make sure. There's T2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Zoom back out. Oops, I'm going to erase that little guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. You will notice down here there's another vertebral body. We said this was twelve. And if you look out to the sides, you'll see that there are no rib articulations. So we're going to assume that this is L1. You can always start at the bottom um, if you're struggling to find this C shape up here, but keep in mind that there are some conditions or anomalies where there are some ribs that will come off of the lumbar vertebrae. That's why I say the T1 is the most accurate way to count. But if you're really struggling finding that, you can always start at the bottom and work your way up. All right. so. Those were our vertebral bodies. Now let's talk about some of the other characteristics that um, our spine, our thoracic spine have. Thoracic spine have this nice long spinous process. And you can see that guy right here. He's usually gonna line up right in the middle. Now he's so long that he'll superimpose the uh, vertebrae that's underneath, underneath it, lying underneath it. We'll also notice that there's this cute little thing we can use to help identify structures on thoracic vertebrae, and this is the thoracic owl. And you can see him here. There's these little circles here and here, here and here. The eyes are the pedicles. The beak is the spinous process. 
mom's eyes, and here's the beak sinus process. You'll often hear the pedicles being referred to as the eyes of the spine because they make up the eyes of our owl and they also make up the eyes of the famous Scotty dog in the oblique lumbar spine. Okay, so now we've got this cute little owl guy. You'll also notice in some patients, hopefully not many, um, but you may run across this from time to time that a pedicle or an eye is missing. If you see this, this is often referred to as the winking owl. And this is an indication um, sometimes of metastasis along the spinal canal. Okay, just a little fun side note. Um, erase all of this. All right, so we've gone over pedicles. We have gone over, let's see, and there's pedicles on the superior view. Uh, we have gone over spinous processes, or spinous processes. Uh, you will also notice transverse processes out to the side here. Okay, very good. And of course, we know that these are posterior ribs because of the direction they're going. If they were anterior ribs, they would be going more this direction. Other structures that you are probably familiar with and uh, from your chest x-rays, it's of course the aortic arch and the heart shadow. Right and left hemidiaphragms, air-filled trachea, and the bifurcation of the right and left primary bronchi, which is the carina. Uh, we identified clavicles. And the joint spaces here are the SC joints, sternoclavicular joints. These are good indicators of rotation, just like in a chest x-ray. Um, pedicles are also a good indicator of whether the patient is rotated and positioned correctly, as well as spinous processes. We'll talk about that more in class. You'll notice in um, this patient that there is a slight curvature, lateral curvature to the right. Um, having a slight lateral curvature in thoracic spine is very normal. We just would be concerned if we saw something a little bit more curved. And of course, a lateral curvature is a form of scoliosis. Okay, we are going to move on to the lateral view. And I'm going to zoom in for this a little bit, and we're going to go over those characteristics uh, that all vertebrae have that we've already identified. We'll go through this a little bit more quickly. All right, so we've got vertebral bodies here and here. Coming right off behind the vertebral bodies, this little area here, those are going to be our pedicles. So here's another body. There's another pedicle area right here. All right, now you move up this way and then down this way. This little hook projecting upward, this is our superior articulating or articular, excuse me, articular process. And then this is our inferior articular process. You are also going to notice that you can see our intervertebral foramina here. I'm going to bring this back down. All right, some other structures you're going to see again are the, is the air-filled trachea, the hilar region. We can see the retrocardial uh, space here. All of this area back here becomes really, really difficult to tell what's what because of all of the posterior rib margins. But it is a good indication of rotation. If you have more than a half of an inch of uh, difference between the margins of the posterior ribs, instead of them being directly superimposed, then you've got too much rotation. A little bit of uh, lack of superimposition is perfectly acceptable because of OID magnification. Of course, you've got your uh, superimposed hemidiaphragms. You've 
you've got heart shadow through here, you've got ribs running down this direction. You're not going to get a good look at T1, 2, or 3. T1 through 3 are not very visible on this projection, therefore you would need to do a swimmers if that was your area of interest. Other structures that you can identify, humeral head, this is the border of the scapula, and I think that should do it. If I missed anything today, we will definitely go over it in class. But please note that if it is on this image, you are responsible for knowing it for class, for the test. Uh, study the study guide, and I'll catch you next time.